It is mid-December, and a city is doing its thing. Memphis, Tennessee, hard by the Mississippi River, economic, social, cultural hub of a region, modern capital of a modern South, is host to a football game. The game is the thing, but the Liberty Bowl is more. The Liberty Bowl is a festival played on a citywide stage. First of the competing teams to arrive, Virginia Tech is greeted by Miss Liberty Bowl, Jane Carroll Foshi, and by scores of photographers from across the nation, there to record her warm welcome to head coach Jerry Claiborne and the members of his Virginia Tech team. Liberty Bowl officials welcome head coach John Vaught and the Ole Miss team to Memphis. There is a personalized hello from Miss Liberty Bowl, who is an Ole Miss student. And there are more notables arriving. Johnny Carson's good friend, and a good friend of the Liberty Bowl, Ed McMahon, arrives to officiate bowl activities. Liberty Bowl week begins on a golf course. The sun shines in Memphis an average of 219 days a year, and in December, the average daytime temperature is a comfortable 52 degrees. The day of the Liberty Bowl golf tournament is one of the other 146, and the average temperature has gone south for the moment. The Liberty Bowl players tee it up, and the game is on. They are athletic officials and coaches from across the country, personalities, writers, and broadcasters. And there is one of golf's leading amateur figures today, Mamphian Curtis Person, who is ending a year in which he won the four leading national seniors tournaments, a golf slam that is the first of its kind. The field for the Liberty Bowl tournament is notable, if not entirely for golf, at least for its determination. For the first time, there is a Liberty Bowl track meet. There will be many more to come. The event is a sparkling success. It is held in Memphis All-Purpose Coliseum, and more than 6,000 people sit in padded theater seat comfort, and they respond enthusiastically. The meet has glamour. Bob Beeman, winner of the gold medal at the Mexico City Olympic Games, duels with an Olympic champion of the past, Ralph Boston, in what is now called the long jump. Beeman wins with a leap of 26.3 feet, and he receives a standing ovation. Bob Segrin, another Mexico City champion, is here to attempt an indoor pole vault record. His competitor is another ex-champion, John Pinnell. They begin with the bar set at 16 feet, and quickly they work it to 17 feet. Pinnell fails to clear at that mark in three attempts. Segrin shows his power and grace at 17 feet on the second try. The bar is raised to 17-5, the point of a new indoor record. Segrin misses three times, despite the urging of the crowd. And now the beat is rising. The kickoff is near. Visitors are flooding into Memphis. Memphis is already aglow for the holidays. The visitors discover something for everyone, an all-encompassing downtown shopping district, an all-enclosed suburban shopping mall. They dine in one of three restaurants which rotate above high business buildings, a panorama of a city whose record and reputation for beauty and cleanliness is unequaled. While the city entertains its visitors, the Liberty Bowl Association is entertaining its own. The association is a microcosm of the whole city. Its membership comes from business, the professions, and the neighborhoods. Its spirit at Liberty Bowl time is all for one and one for all. The Variety Club of Memphis annually hosts a dinner party for Liberty Bowl officialdom and its guests. The city and the bowl festival now is a whirl of color and conviviality. The Liberty Bowl Association each year sponsors a luncheon at Memphis Holiday Inn Rivermont. Members of the participating teams, their coaches, 
visiting athletic officials from across the country, wives and honored guests, require 1,200 lunches, sponsored by the association and by more than 100 business firms in Memphis. Athletic visitors say there is nothing like it anywhere in the world of postseason bowl activities. Players dine with the fans, adding fuel to the fires of anticipation that are already glowing in players and spectators alike. Every guest at the Liberty Bowl luncheon leaves with gifts and with memories. The social tempo at Liberty Bowl time never slows or peaks. It is constant. On Friday night before the game, the Liberty Bowl Association celebrates a black tie dinner at the downtown Sheraton Peabody Hotel. While the football players rest and contemplate, their athletic parents, the coaches, the university officials and families dine and dance. The moment arrives on a sunny, cold day for the main event. The University of Mississippi and Virginia Tech are about to play football at Memphis Memorial Stadium, an architectural monument to the sport, one of the newest and finest ever built. Each team has walked a high road to this reward. Ole Miss beating Alabama and LSU. Tech in a victory described as its greatest ever over Florida State. Ole Miss brings a record of 6-3-1 to Memphis Memorial Stadium. VPI comes to the Liberty Bowl 7-3. But their credentials are deeper than that. Tech's head coach Jerry David Claiborne has compiled a six-year record at Blacksburg of 43 wins, 17 losses, and one tie. His trademarks are solid defense, a strong kicking game, minute planning, and just plain hard work. He faces across the field of not-so-friendly combat John Howard Vaught, ending 22 seasons at Ole Miss, one of the most successful teachers in the history of the game. 163 victories, 48 defeats, 11 ties, and 12 consecutive ball games. His 21-year record is the second best in the nation among major colleges. 46,206 challenged the 27-degree weather to break the Liberty Bowl record and to witness the confrontation. The 46,000 will not be disappointed. They will share with millions tuned in coast to coast via television a truly classic football game. Ole Miss kicks off. Bob Slaughter receives for VPI at the 32 and he finds immediate resistance. The return is only three yards, but Tech is in business at its own 35. On the first play, Isle Kincaid rolls right for seven yards, and Ole Miss, prepared to defend inside, is surprised. The second play is a piece of treachery. Kincaid limps slowly toward the sideline, the Tech line mills around, and the Ole Miss defense is asleep. Kincaid pitches wide left to Ken Edwards, who has an escort of three blockers. Edwards waltzes 58 yards for a touchdown. VPI calls it the Deacon Special. Our grandfathers called it the Swinging Gate. Whatever it is called, Tech is ahead 7 to nothing after Jack Simsack makes the extra point. The Rebels get their first offensive chance. Archie Manning, the super sophomore, wants to pass on first down. He is hit by defensive end Joe Tucker, and Manning surrenders the ball. Tech is under a full head of steam as Terry Smoot digs out three yards. Kincaid gets first down at right end, and the Gobblers continue to confound a defense not prepared to cover wide. Ken Edwards rips left tackle for nine. BPI is second and one at the Ole Miss nine-yard line. Terry Smoot, the powerful junior tailback from Charleston, gets the call and he responds at the right flank for six more points. DPI has covered 27 yards in just four plays, adds its 14th point with two minutes, 17 seconds gone in the first quarter. The kickoff leaves Ole Miss first and 10 at its own 25. 
The Rebels are down two touchdowns, and they have handled the ball only once. Bo Boyne, the fullback, tries the VPI tackle for five yards. Ole Miss is exploring the nature of the beast now as Steve Heinemann punches at left guard three more yards. Manning tries his second pass on third and two from the 33. He misses Floyd Franks, and Ole Miss must punt. Ron Davidson accepts the football at his 26. He finds an excellent escort. Davidson scoots forward for a 32-yard punt return to the Ole Miss 42. The Tech steamer is boiling. Kincaid rolls wide once more for four yards to the Ole Miss 38. Edwards takes a pitch out from Kincaid and drives for nine more yards to the 29. It is here that the first penalty forces a miss in the VPI machine. Quarterback Al Kincaid attempts his first pass of the game. It is incomplete. On second and 15, Smoot gets five yards at left tackle. Kincaid tries again to throw, but now the Mississippi defense has shaken its slumber. It is alive and well right there at its own 21-yard line. And there is a slight shift in that thing known as momentum. Simsack punts, and Tex Butch Hall downs it at the Rebel one-yard line. Two running plays net three yards, and Manning decides desperate measures are needed. On third and long, he drifts deep into his own end zone and barely escapes a two-point tackle. Julian Fagan is called upon to kick Ole Miss out of trouble. But VPI makes a second key mistake. Fagan is roughed in the end zone. Instead of owning the ball at the Ole Miss 38, VPI is back on defense, and Mississippi is first down at its 19. Steve Hyman probes left guard for one yard. Manning on second down finds Bo Bowen loose in the Tech secondary, but the pass is out of his fingers. But confidence is returning now to the Ole Miss quarterback. On third down, he makes his first completion to a wide open Steve Heinemann. The gain is 31 yards. Mississippi is in the enemy's half of the field for the first time. An incomplete pass, a short running play, bring up third down at the VPI 46. Ron Davidson intercepts a Manning pass at the Tech 14, and the men of Jerry Claiborne are still in control of the game. Smoot gets five yards at the Ole Miss right tackle. Edwards follows with three, but a holding penalty pushes Tech to its own nine, third down and 14. George Constantinides, the man they call Cannonball at Blacksburg, lines up at fullback and carries the football for the first time in the game. On the draw, Constantinides breaks a tackle behind the line of scrimmage, powers 40 yards from danger to daylight. Tech is first down at its own 49. Smoot whacks inside for four yards. Kincaid keeps wide right for a 12-yard gain and another first down at the Rebel 32. Terry Smoot pours through the Mississippi defenders for 17 more to the 13-yard line. And now Tech is threatening to crack the football game wide open. But the Ole Miss defense is not out. Two running plays get two yards, and a pass is incomplete. On fourth down, Jack Simsack lines up a field goal at the 19. His kick travels the 29 yards, dead between the goal posts, and Tech is up 17 to nothing with a minute 48 left in the first quarter. The next play may have been the game breaker. Coach Claiborne decides to try a crusher, decides to gamble. On the kickoff, Tech attempts an onside kick, but the football falls one yard short of the required 10-yard carry. Ole Miss takes over inside BPI territory. On first down, Bowen gets two yards at left guard. The fans can sense a change in tempo. Manning passes to Hank Schaus for nine yards and a first down at the Tech 38. 
Manning rolls and keeps for a nine-yard gain to the VPI 27. The first quarter ends with VPI's 17 points, a Liberty Bowl record. On the third play of the second period, Manning throws to Shows at the Gobbler 10. The senior tight end from Mendenhall, Mississippi, drives over tacklers, and he finds the promised land. Van Brown's extra point made it 17-7, but the game had a new leader. Tech is third down 13 at its own 13-yard line when Al Kincaid drifts to his right and sets sail on a 30-yard sprint that is almost all Kincaid against the defense. Ole Miss draws 15 more for roughness, and BPI suddenly is first down at the Mississippi 42. Seven plays and a 15-yard holding penalty later, Jack Simsack tries his second field goal of the day. It is a 46-yarder, and it falls short of the mark. Ole Miss takes over at its own 20-yard line. Manning passes to Shaws for 13 yards and a first down, but there the drive stalls. There is an exchange of punts, and Ole Miss gets the better of it. Riley Myers takes Simsack's kick on the 50, falls behind his blocking formation, and returns it 27 yards to the VPI 23. On first down, Manning hits Steve Heinemann, but the ball gets away. Leon Feltz replaces Heinemann, and on second and 10, Manning hits Feltz with a strike in the tech end zone for six points. Van Brown kicked it to 17-14, and there is no longer any doubt that Ole Miss can catch up. After the kickoff, Tech is first and 10 on three running plays at its own 38-yard line. Terry Smoot cracks right tackle, and Ole Miss cracks Terry Smoot. The ball is fumbled. The Rebels recover. On first down, quarterback Manning lobs a pass eight yards to Bowen. He tries the same receiver on second and two, but misses connections. On third down, Manning tries for Feltz and barely escapes an interception by Tex Lenny Smith. It is fourth and two. Manning keeps and sweeps left, but he is thrown for a two-yard loss by VPI's Larry Creekmore and Nick Del Vicio. There is another exchange of the ball, and the half ends. Virginia Tech 17, Ole Miss 14. The Techmen take a lead to the dressing room, but Ole Miss takes momentum. The halftime ceremonies measure up to the first half of football. They are colorful and exciting. It is a program with a purpose, a salute to liberty. Preceded by the performances of the VPI Regimental Band and the University of Mississippi Marching Band. Special ceremonies were produced by the Freedoms Foundation of Valley Forge. They included presentation of the Purple Heart Medals to four Mid-South servicemen wounded in Vietnam. The Assistant Commandant of the United States Marine Corps makes the presentation, General Lewis Walt. On the stand of honor were four Medal of Honor winners. Three recipients are heroes of Vietnam. The Vice President-elect of the United States came to Memphis Memorial Stadium to praise them all. Something like 46,000 American flags, given each Liberty Bowl fan as he entered the stadium, are waved as one to the nation, and liberty is saluted. The game resumes. At the half, Mississippi has made a defensive adjustment, but before its trial, the Rebels have an offensive plan. Riley Myers takes the kickoff at his six, returns 15 yards to the Ole Miss 21. On the first play, Steve Heinemann is sent straight ahead on a quick hitter. Heinemann bursts through the VPI front, eludes the defensive halfback, and it is a foot race to the goal line. The senior tailback wins the 79-yard dash for the longest run of his collegiate career. Brown's extra point sends Ole Miss ahead 
for the first time in the game, 21 to 17. On the kickoff, Smoot fumbles at the VPI 25, and Ole Miss is there to accept the invitation. But Tech has a proud defense. Bowen rips right tackle for seven yards. Four more running plays, two by Bowen and two by Heinemann, give Ole Miss a first down goal at the Tech three. On first, Heinemann tries tackle and gets a grudging yard. Second down, and Manning keeps wide right, but gains nothing on a hard tackle by Tech's Mike Widger. It is third and goal at the two. Manning decides to put it up, but Shaws cannot hold on in the end zone. On fourth down, Manning sees a shaft of light inside right tackle. He drives toward it, and his head crosses the goal. But the ball does not. And after some discussion, VPI is awarded a brilliant last stand and the football. At the half, Ole Miss has moved its defensive tackles wider, and the Gobblers, landlocked by a weak passing attack, are sealed in their fate. On first down at the 11. Three running plays, net VPI, five yards. It becomes a defensive football game for the remaining five minutes of the third quarter, which ends with a four-point advantage, Ole Miss, 21-17. With 13-26 left in the last quarter, there is a break. Simsack punts to the Ole Miss 18-yard line. On first down, Bowen runs at left tackle and loses the football. Tex Waddy Harvey finds it at the Mississippi 25. The door is open. Terry Smoot moves at the Rebel tackle. He gets only two yards. Edwards tries the other side for five, but a clipping penalty sets the Gobblers back to the Ole Miss 37. It's running game stopped. Tech looks to the air and four Tech receivers. Instead, Kincaid throws to Mississippi's Bob Bailey at the Rebel 30. Kincaid is the only man in Bailey's path, and he is removed on a stinging block by the Rebels' John Aldrich. Bailey covers 70 yards, and he covers the hopes of EPI. It is 28 to 17 after Brown's point after touchdown. With 11.54 remaining, Tech hopes to drive from its own 16. Wayne Humphreys replaces Kincaid to spark the passing game. But Humphreys is off the mark, too. Fred Brister juggles it, hangs on, and Mississippi is in possession at the VPI 28. Three plays gain nothing. With 9.09 left, Van Brown steps into a perfect 46-yard kick for three points. It is Brown's longest, and it is long enough for a Liberty Bowl record, too. And that puts Mississippi all but out of reach, 31 to 17. On the kickoff, Tech fumbles on an attempted handoff. Once more, the Rebels accept a gift. They are first down and goal at the VPI three. The pride of the Tech defense again asserts itself. Bowen hit left tackle for one yard, stopped by the Gobblers' Nick Del Vicio. Bowen is not convinced, and he tries the same spot on second down. Del Vincio is even more convincing and gives Bowen nothing. On third down, Steve Heinemann takes a turn up the middle and is denied even a foot by Pete Doyot. On fourth down, Doyot leads a defensive charge that stops Heinemann one yard short of scrimmage. VPI takes the football right there. Four running plays had gained Ole Miss one yard. They had gained VPI's defense immeasurable respect. The offensive unit cannot move, and it is forced to punt from the 16. Ole Miss takes the ball with 5.37 left in the game at its 44. They hold it for 11 plays, nine of them on the ground, and the clock spares only 46 seconds when VPI gets a punt at its 20. With 40 seconds left, Humphreys passes to Jerry Krigger for VPI's only pass completion of the game. It nets just two yards. Tech expires in desperation. Ole Miss has given the ball at the nine with nine seconds to play. Manning tries for six on first down, but his pass is incomplete. With two seconds left, Van Brown kicks a 26-yard field goal to write the final score, 34-17. 
The 10th annual Liberty Bowl is finished. But it produced 51 points, 658 yards total offense, and two of the bravest defensive stands ever seen. Each team had spoken well for its university. The spoils of the victory were earned on the field and awarded at a banquet. The post-game affair is a reward to all the participants, but the silver went to Ole Miss Steve Heineman as the most valuable player and the offensive back award. The Rebels' Bob Bailey took the defensive back trophy for his 70-yard interception and touchdown. Worthy McClure of Mississippi was awarded the offensive lineman plaque, and Waddy Harvey of EPI was named the game's outstanding defensive lineman. And so it is done for another year, but a little bigger and a little better than ever before. And already the men of the Liberty Bowl Association are thinking of 1969. Mid-December 1969, when Memphis will again do its thing. A little bigger and a little better. <laughs> <laughs>